in the middle of the city's infamous red light district but the century-old quaint German restaurant that serves amazing regional delicacies was reservation only and we didn't have one of those and despite our begging they wouldn't let us in so we had a little powwow outside and then we realized we were hangry from our four-hour train from Denmark that we were almost late for so we didn't have time to get snacks but anyway that's where we ended up but I mean we both like kebabs how do you know it's the red light district Steph and Pete, we traveled for about a year and a half full time with our two three-year-old son Hayes at the time and decided we liked it so much that after six months at home, we're doing it again. And on this trip, we were trying to take trains from Copenhagen, Denmark to Tbilisi, Georgia, and Hamburg is our second stop of the trip. I'm not totally up to date on my Beatles history, but I do know that they lived and played in this area, St. Pauli's, Reaper's Vaughn, the Sinful Mile, um, from 1960 to 1962. And I think it's where they became successful. What about Liverpool? That was after, no? no I think they really made their name in Where Liverpool. Where did it? You got like the, the Cavern Club and stuff. I don't but know. But I think they, they got their start here. Made, yeah. He did sent they? them here to get famous so that they could go back to Liverpool and reap the success. Okay. Anyway, thank you Hamburg. We'll see you in the morning. It's the next day, a fresh start, and we are at the place that was the main reason that we wanted to come to Hamburg, which is Miniature Wunderland. Miniature Wonderland. I'm gonna try and contain my excitement, but <laughs> this has like been a bucket list item for me. I have wanted to come here for so long. I'm like such a like closeted miniature layout geek. I think when I got a train set for Christmas one year, it was like one of the greatest things ever. Because I it was a surprise. My parents like had it laid out, I didn't even know. Woke up that morning and it was there. Oh so this is the best in the world. Like there's no, nothing else compares to this. For those of you that are unaware, which is a lot of the world considering this is the world's largest model railway and one of the top tourist attractions in all of Germany. It was started by some twin brothers in 2001. They actually ran a Hamburg nightclub and record label, but decided that they wanted a change of lifestyle and they had always been train buffs and had this dream to build the world's largest model railway. They also have a really good YouTube channel which I am subscribed to and watch all their videos. Some stats on this place. It is 75,000 square feet. It's in a warehouse in the, I haven't said this word out loud yet, Spikerstadt area. It's across three stories. There's over 1,000 digitally controlled trains, over 52,000 feet of track, and this place employs 360 people. So not only do they have an insane amount of trains in here, but they also have this airport that, I don't know how old it is now, but I remember watching all the videos of them like constructing it, like building it, coming up with the concept of like the takeoff and the landing thing. 500 it's, a day. It's so complex. Like the amount of work and like brain power it's taken to do this is like just so inspiring. And it's better than I can imagine. I mean, it's just like, I'm geeking out so much. It's amazing. They actually like simulate the actual like, pushback of a plane from the gate, all the way taxiing out, take off, like all of it. Just one practical tip, so we didn't get to eat at the only restaurant we wanted to eat at in Hamburg last night because we didn't make reservations. We also didn't make reservations for here until the last minute, and so the only time slot that was available was 7.30 a.m. This place is open from like 7 7.30 a.m. till 10.30 p.m., but honestly, 
What a blessing. There's nobody in here right now. I thought it would fill up really quickly because like literally every other time slot was taken. But now it's almost eight o'clock and we have the whole area practically to ourselves. The other really cool thing about this place is that every so often, maybe every half an hour, I'm not sure, they make it nighttime for about three minutes so that you can see all of the different landscapes in the evening time. I kept quite calm and clever. Jason and I have gone to the bathroom, seen the entire exhibit of the Alps, gone downstairs for a little bit, and Pete is still over there watching airplanes take off and land. Just another funny detail, not funny, but there's Greta Thunberg demonstrating on an ice floe. I don't even know what an ice floe is. Isn't that like a version of a piece of an iceberg? Daddy, there's an octopus right over there. Global warming, nothing. We just walked across the river, or we're trying to, Hayes really loves the terrain going up and down this bridge uh, to the newest exhibit, which is Rio. They keep purchasing more areas of this building and adding and adding. So they don't yet have Asia or Africa, um, but they're like teasing it in this bridge. So I think they will work on those soon. So one of the new ones that, a uh, new section that they're gonna have here soon is uh, Monaco, and they figured out how to do the actual Formula One track. They've evidently spent a while figuring out how to run actual like randomized races of the F1 cars. This is another really cool feature about Manager Wonder. Is that you can see. Oh my gosh. You can see people making the models. It's really, really cool. Let's keep it Almost three hours later, we finished off at Miniature Wonderland, which exceeded all of our expectations. It was incredible. Uh, but it's raining outside, we need to regroup. So we've come next door to a rather touristy coffee shop. It's called Spikerstadt Roastery. Spikerstadt is the name of the area we're in. It literally means city of warehouses. Um, and many of them were, were used to transport coffee and still are today. This coffee shop is not old, it's from like 2006, but it's in a building from 1888. And I just read that the oldest coffee shop in Hamburg was from the 1600s. We also ordered a Franz Rostin, which is a sweet pastry with cinnamon, but it used to only be available in Hamburg. I think now they're all over Germany, but it's special to Hamburg. It's really cold. I don't know that this is like a place I would make a must. If I'm being honest, it's like a subpar um, cinnamon roll. Like a really mediocre cinnamon roll. This is for 10, my dad. But Hayes just said, I'm glad it's raining because it's helping Ten's a garden. It's very cute. It's okay if he's got red shirts can then red bike. We've now come to, um, I don't know how to say this, Brook 10. What's the umlaut mean? You can say this. Um, boat, boat, restaurant. Come to a restaurant on the sea to eat another thing that you have to eat in Hamburg, which is a Fischbruchten. Um, the classic one is with raw herring, which we've had. I lived in Amsterdam for a year. Uh, it's not my favorite, so we went with like a fried fish one, and then the salmon that a lot of people is getting. This is a little deconstructed because Hayes just took the bread off. Um, but there's an amazing fish market, evidently, here in Hamburg, but it's only on Sundays. It's just down the road, so this seemed like the next best option. Um, What's that little berry? Or is it a peppercorn? What do you think that is? Anybody knows? I think it's, it's peppercorn. Um, it's good. It's very simple, but like fresh and delicious, and you can eat with a view of the uh, the port. That really hit the spot. I'm gonna try to get better about giving what things cost. The salmon one was about eight euros, the fried fish one was about four euros, and it is three o'clock on a Monday afternoon on a rainy day in October, and there was a line outside there the whole time. So definitely recommend that spot. Hey.
We are walking to a boat ride and there's all these little kiosks here and we were very tempted by the fries. So round two, Palms, Palms Mi Mayo. Oh, wow. Wow. Hey. Oh, wow. nice. Does anybody else's kid love pigeons? Is, is that like a universal thing, right? Hayes isn't gonna grow up to be like a murderer because he likes chasing pigeons. He's calling them chickens. <laughs> it doesn't matter. He's, and then he's calling he's seagulls really, eagles. He's really mean to them. Well, no, actually, in his defense, he's actually been feeding a few as well, which okay. I don't think he's not hurting them. He's just appreciate. shouting at them. Mm. Why can I do for I forgot how good like European mayonnaise is. Somewhere between the fries and the boat. It started to like really rain. It is a beautiful day for a boat ride. But you know what? They have a vending machine that sells beer. Two beers? Only in Germany do you show up for a boat ride over 10 minutes early. And we're the last ones here. <laughs> what do you want? One. This one had citrus in it. What do you want? I don't care. You love the shandy. And you like what's her? And I like bread You like fish markets, bread, and french fries. That segment was brought to you by Hayes, but this segment of the video is sponsored by Get Your Guide. We've been using Get Your Guide for over a year now, and we love them. They make it super simple to find experiences in over 3,000 countries all over the world. There are 60,000 experiences to choose from, and their app makes it super simple to book and have tickets and not need to print things. You can cancel any tour you book up to 24 hours before, so if your plans change, it's no problem. Their customer service is great. We've genuinely enjoyed so many of their experiences in so many of the countries we've been to, and we're gonna be using them throughout this trip through Europe, so we can't wait to show you more, and hopefully we'll pick tours on better days. So, if you wanna book your own rainy boat ride, or anything else in any country you're going to, probably. Wait, wait, rainy boat ride in German. Check out Get Your Guide. See if you can do better than we did. We have a link in the description below, uh, as well as some top experiences in Hamburg, but I think you'd enjoy it. It would also help our channel out, so go do it. Have a good time. tip is that so you can come to this plaza to get it sweeping views of the harbor and it's free but you can also buy timed entry tickets so that you can skip the line which I did they're three euro each so it's like seems worth it right not a big deal well turns out on a rainy day in October there is no line and not only did I buy those tickets once I actually bought them for like 10 o'clock this morning and then we changed our plans and I bought them again for 5 30 and it's 5 o'clock right now and we wanted to enter early and you can't enter early but it doesn't matter because we just got a free ticket because there's not many people here so I wasted 18 euros on tickets I didn't need which is nobody's fault but mine I'm just highlighting how out of practice we are this is the Elbe Philharmonie it was supposed to cost 200 million dollars and when it was finished it cost 866 million dollars so it's quite controversial uh, and it's a concert hall Crystal clear day, beautiful visibility. <laughs> This floor is like the slippiest. <laughs> We've come to the Sternish Sternschanze. 
Stan Shanza neighborhood. I think this is like the hip hipster neighborhood. I don't know. This place was on the list. So much more. Don't leave me here searching. You're just what I'm This is the first time in a while that we've been out since the sun went down. I'm tired. So we spent most of the day yesterday exploring the spiker spot, but we're actually staying in that neighborhood too at the Amaron Hotel. This hotel has been perfect for a short stay in Hamburg because of the amazing location, particularly for us since it's only five minutes from Miniature Wonderland. But it's also within walking distance of the Opera House, close to central Hamburg, and well suited for the U-Bahn and buses. The rooms are gorgeous. They're all decorated in this like deep rusty color. They've got this kind of like 50s, 60s vibe. But you know I love a hotel breakfast and the best part has been walking across the bridge to the breakfast with views of this historic area. In fact, this building was originally a coffee exchange. So thank you to Amaron Hotel. If you're in Hamburg, definitely check it out. It is wonderful. This segment was filmed a little bit later in the day when the weather finally started to cooperate. But for now, we have one little thing to take care of before we can do some sightseeing. The next thing that's gone wrong in Hamburg is that we have lost Ani. Ani is the langoustine stuffed animal that was given to Hayes in Scotland and it's the only stuffed animal we travel with and we beat. mistakenly let Hayes take it out yesterday uh, and he has not come back. So we are retracing our steps in hopes of locating Ani. I guess in Hayes' TV shows they say that we should split up so he keeps suggesting that we all split up which is not gonna happen. <laughs> expecting it to be here so thank you so much that is amazing wow where was he do you think he tried to sleep with all the trains he stayed here overnight thank you so much wow you what a result i thought we lost him forever well i guess not everything went wrong in hamburg i'm quite emotional i'm quite emotional <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just relieved. <laughs> but he told us at breakfast, he was like, I think I dropped him on the stairs at Miniature Wonderland when we were going in. So, I mean. Listen to your parents. Right. Casey, we didn't even have to split up. Come to Isemarkt, which is actually it's Europe's longest open air market. But it's not entirely open air, which is great because the weather here is wet. It's under this railway, and it's like over it's over a kilometer. And we also learned on the train because the family in front of us had a brochure that they also call this area uh, a little Notting Hill because it's full of like independent shops, and it actually looks pretty similar. And this market is only on Tuesdays and Fridays, and this is the perfect like second day activity after we've done all of our sightseeing. Not all of it, obviously. Uh, so we feel really lucky that we're in town on a Tuesday. Talking of things that look similar, some people have said that I actually look like Hugh Grant. Let me know in the comments. One of the most popular stalls here is the, uh, is the little candy stall. And you'd think that it'd be full of kids, but it's not. It's full of grown-ups buying their candy. Yeah, Alright, when in Hamburg, go to the cute little Italian pastry place. <laughs> Would you like to buy a little bit? Yeah? Yeah? 
feel like we just ate breakfast, but we keep seeing currywurst everywhere and we're leaving Germany tonight. I think they have it in Austria too, but we're gonna share one. They have these machines that like chop the sausage. I've like not seen that before. Stick it into it. Just yeah, they it like stick it, yeah. Thank you. Stick your sausage in and then it like cuts it into small pieces. Thank you. <laughs> Ten recommend that market and really great to get a little bit outside of the center and see like a neighborhood. Trains have USB phone chargers. You can like sit here and charge your phone. I mean the world's moving to USB-C but like it's a good start. Now that we're leaving tonight it is like the most beautiful spring day. Fall. It's... 